player on the planet. I concur. Meanwhile, welcome to Coast to Coast. Carrie Champion here, David Lloyd there. Another day, another non-commitment commitment. Kyrie isn't saying yes to Boston, but he's not also saying no. Right, David? Uh, it's kind of, yeah. Dominoes are starting to fall, Kerry, in reaction to the Porzingis trade yesterday. The Knicks freeing up cap space for a run at free agents this summer. And one of their targets expected to be Kyrie Irving, who has suddenly changed his tune about his future. He can be a free agent this summer, but remember, publicly proclaimed his intent to stay with the Celtics back in October. Have a listen to this. No. Oh. I appreciate that scout I joined in, but I shared it with some of my teammates as well as the organization and everyone else in Boston. If you guys will have me back, I plan on re-signing here next year. Boom! So. Okay, he said that. Didn't sound like he was leaving a lot of wiggle room last fall, but today, less than four months later, his attitude seemed a lot more open to fielding offers this summer. Has your mindset shifted, though, in regards to re-signing uh, with Boston, like the announcement? That's me July 1st. You know, well, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what I feel is best for my career. And, uh, you know, that's just where it stands. And my focus this season is winning a championship with the Boston Celtics. Um, you know, obviously, we had goals coming into the season, and primary goal is to win a championship. So that's where my focus is. I mean, I'm going to just do what's best for me. Um, that's where it really comes down to. Uh, obviously, this has become like an entertainment thing for everybody. So, you know, somebody else is asking for a trade, and I'm thrown into that, and uncertainty comes back on me. And you know, at the end of the day, like I don't live in this little hub that, you know, I don't. I, everything. Some people call me about this, you know, this dumb. Sh you know, of course, my name is keep throwing on in this. I'm not worried about a reputation. I'm not worried about a legacy to leave. I'm just trying to be a human being, trying to make the best decision for me and my family. So. You know, um, obviously, you know, things this season haven't gone as, as I planned. Um, and, you know, and that's part of being on a team where you're, you're still trying to figure things out. So uh, you know, I'm always going to be mature about that professional, um, come to do my job every single day, and really just see what happens. Um, you know, that's what it really comes down to. All right, really see what happens. Meanwhile, uh, let's see what happens in terms of context. ESPN NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski joining me now on Coast to Coast. Um, Kyrie said a lot. Uh, I'm surprised by that. However, what do you make of all of this? Well, I, I think what Kyrie is saying publicly uh, is a sense that Boston has gotten privately, which is he is frustrated with the season. They all are in Boston. They thought the team would be in a different place in the standings, and they thought, you know, they'd be further along as, as a front runner, as a favorite in the Eastern Conference. And, you know, Boston believes this, that their job beyond winning as much as they can this year, having as much success, because that's going to factor into this, that when we get to draft night in June, that Boston has the best possible roster to, ha you know, to have around Kyrie Irving headed into free agency and him, you know, ultimately deciding to, to go out and take meetings elsewhere or to sign with Boston. And a big part of that is going to be Anthony Davis. And uh, for the Celtics, the, the worst case scenario for Boston, and they know this, is the team underachieves and they don't go as far as they thought they might. And Anthony Davis either gets traded somewhere else uh, or, um, you know, stays in New Orleans and the Celtics don't get at him. But I think they feel like if they've got Davis, if this team has success and there's belief uh, on Kyrie Irving's part that they're still in a great position to keep him. But the public has seen, uh, you know, the press conference or the, 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 the arena moment with Kyrie yeah. earlier in the year and a commercial where he talks about getting his jersey retired. This is a departure from that. Okay, so it's a far departure from that. Again, we just played him saying, if you all will have me, I plan on staying here. And this is pretty much a turnaround. Ask me July 1. So if I am Boston, and I, I have to think the front office, the franchise, uh, has conversations with Kyrie, yep. and they, this isn't a surprise to them, perhaps a surprise to us, but I have to believe they saw this coming. I don't know if they saw it coming playing out in public this way. And this is for a Boston organization, especially, you know, in this uh, Brad Stevens era, this last few years, you haven't had the, this kind of drama. And, you know, Kyrie was in Cleveland and he was used to having this around there uh, a lot with LeBron. And that was kind of part of the makeup and, and LeBron thrived in it and the organization thrived in it. But for the Celtics with a lot of younger players on this team who haven't been through this and all the attention 
um, that it brings, especially today being in New York, being at the Garden, playing the Knicks. And for a team that's struggling, it's not the perfect scenario for them, mm. you know, to continue to try to right the group, but it's the reality. It's where we are. And, and Kyrie, um, like, you know, Boston knows they're in a fight to keep him. And at the end of the day, acquiring Anthony Davis, they believe is going to be a big part of that. And, but that's not something they can do until the season's over as long as they have Kyrie on the roster. Woj, fans everywhere, and by everywhere, I mean in Boston and L.A., are thinking they are putting their conspiracy theories together. They are, the first thing I said was he's coming to L.A. Look, I don't know. I, I, but listen, we are excited to find out that there is more to talk about in the NBA besides what's happening and where, in fact, Kyrie will be. Thank you so much for joining us to give us a little context to this Thanks, latest situation. David, back to you. All right, uh, some, probably some people in Manhattan smiling at Kyrie's comments today, too. Let's talk about the Mavs and the Knicks. Mavs getting Chris Stops Porzingis, of course, yesterday. Dream pick-and-roll partner for Luka Doncic. The Knicks get Dennis Smith Jr., a couple first-rounders, and the cap space to operate with this summer with all the big-time talent. Let's bring in our NBA front office insider, Bobby Marks, now. So Kyrie's comments today seem to play a little bit into the, the Knicks' court. Uh, they're going to be swinging from their heels, aggressively going after free agents. I, I would imagine that Kyrie's not going to go to the Knicks alone. There might need to be someone else there. So run us through potential guys, duos that the Knicks could get with the, the cap space they have. Yeah, I think the best way to look at the trade yesterday is to break it into two parts. It's Kristaps Porzingis for Dennis Smith Jr., two first-round picks, and hope. And that hope is $71 million in cap space. Uh, for a talent-rich free agent class. And, and that can get you two max players. It could get you potentially a player like Kyrie Irving if we slide him in here. That leaves you with $39.5 million. It also has room for a player like Kevin Durant. If you slide Durant in here, that gets you your two main guys. Now, here's the question that you have to ask Durant or Irving. Is this roster, as constructed, mm -hmm. good enough to win right now compared to what you have in Golden State and what you have in Boston. And these are a lot of young, unproven players. Does that change if you get the number one pick, possibly Zion Williamson? Maybe, mm -hmm. but that is a big commitment for both players to come together and go to a New York team that's in the lottery right now. Okay, and as, as you were telling me earlier, better get it done this summer because the talent isn't anywhere near as deep in 2020. So Nick's gotta get something done now. Bobby Marks giving us the very latest there. All right, David, thank you so much for that. Cheney and Gumake joining me right now on Coast to Coast. We got more basketball. So much happening so soon. Uh, so let's get right to it. Did you see the Lakers Clippers last night? I had to. LeBron James is back. Come on, Carrie. He is back. So let's get to it. He's got a nice new jacket on, nice new suit, suited and booted. What happens? Uh, this is his first game since Christmas. Let's go straight to the fourth because it was crazy. Lakers lead by six. Rondo drops it to Ingram. He shoots a three, misses LeBron there for the putback, and he's like, I'm back. Yeah, the he's back. back. Yeah, and, rough, yeah, rough first two quarters for LeBron, but he did facilitate late and almost got a triple-double. All right, you know what we need a Steve Ballmer cam, do we not? We definitely do. You know, Tobias Harris, he's playing like the all-star snub he truly is, Carrie. He, he's feeling as if he's been snubbed, and so he's taking it out on everyone. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Did you just watch that possession on defense right there? Look at it. <laughs> clean, clean strip. Um, all right. So, look, the game is going to overtime. It was a tight one. It was back and forth, back and forth. Uh, LeBron can't. He's like, what? This makes no sense. So let's set it up here. Uh, LeBron, too, and I don't know if you know this, they call Lance Stevenson born ready. Why is that, Cheney? Because he'll always be ready for the big shot, but this is Mr. Big Shot, that turnaround fadeaway, the hardest shot in basketball. But Lance Stevenson, he had a huge game. He's been great, a big boost off the bench, especially for deep. Born ready. I didn't know that. Uh, so anyway, Clippers are only down by three. We got just about two seconds left. Can they get it done? No, Rondo is saving it here. What does he do? Yeah, wh what is you doing, baby? Like, you gotta get a <laughs> shot off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lou Will can get it done. Shanae, let's talk about the bigger issue. But before we do that, here's LeBron. You know, I'm not feeling, you know, particularly great right now. Uh, I'm definitely ecstatic about being back out there with my guys and, and getting a great role win uh, versus a team that we're, you know, kind of, you know, climbing, you know, during, in the playoff race. But, you know, after being out five weeks, you know, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling it right now. I wish I could click my shoes together and be home right now in my bed. So, uh, but it was, it, was, it was great to be back out there. I'm like 80% right now, but 
it felt good to be 80 and, and just to be back on the floor and put on a Lakers uniform again. That's what it's all about. That's when I'm here and uh, happy to be back. 80 percent, uh, 40 minutes, he pointed that out. I understand that LeBron inspires the players, and a win is a win, but do you think realistically LeBron can sustain that type of effort with hopes of reaching the postseason? Oh, yes. With LeBron James back, I really think that this Lakers team can make it to the playoffs. And I know, Carrie, you especially and every Lakers fan out there <laughs> has some serious <laughs> trust issues with these Lakers <laughs> because of how they played when LeBron James was out. Those 17 games, they went 6-4-11. And they, for lack of a better term, they were a hot mess of inconsistency. But guess what? LeBron James is back. And they're only one game back of the eighth position in the West for the playoffs. So with LeBron back, he playing his best basketball. Most people, it would take them a couple games to find their rhythm. Well, it only took him two quarters, and he finished with, what, 24, 14, and 9. And also, what, Brandon Ingram just came off a career high. So this is a Lakers team trending in the right direction. I still have them in the playoffs. Okay, I do have trust issues. Thank you for pointing that out. LeBron, again, played 40 minutes in his first game back, and it was the fifth time he's done so this season. Chanane Gumake, thank you so much for being here. We have Harry and myself, L. Duncan, a EuroLeague takeover in yeah. Dallas. Yeah, right? We've got all over the league. Uh, apparently, we've got more on the Kristaps Porzingis trade and who benefited the most, plus all the stars from Atlanta. We'll talk to three Super Bowl champs in a minute. Yes, we will. But you see Chanane Gumake with us this morning. Why is she here? Because we're going to talk about LeBron James after 17 games. Oop, there it is. LeBron is back. 6-11 without him today. What did you expect out of LeBron in game one? You know, I was not surprised that he had a slow start. But here, if you watch this play, clearly he's watching James Harden with a step-back, step-back. We'll get into what LeBron felt about how he performed last night. If he felt 100% where he was mentally, physically, more on that in a minute. But he got some help from Lance Stevenson. This was good Lance Stevenson last night. Make him dance, Lance. Lance has been playing great basketball, you know, lately. He's been a boost off the bench, knocking down long-range shots. You talk about long range, five of eight from three off the bench. Big night from Stevenson. He would contribute late in this game. LeBron back in the game. Lakers lead by six. Rondo drops it off to Brandon Ingram. Misses the three-pointer. LeBron there for the putback. Yeah, he was a little out of rhythm to start, so he started doing the little things. Rebounding, passing, <coughs> triple-doubling. He was close. Very 40 close. seconds left in the game. Tobias Harris hits the three. Steve Ballmer loves it. Still tied at 112. Ten seconds to go. LeBron drives strips. Yeah, Tobias Harris is playing like the all-star snub he is. Big possession on one end, another big possession on the other end. Most refs would give LeBron the call, but guess what? This is clean defense right here. Yeah, there, and you right? saw LeBron's like confident. I'll get the call. I'll get LeBron. the call. Uh, I'll get the call. No, hold he up. Did. Wait a minute. <laughs> Headed to overtime. LeBron getting ready for OT. Played 35 minutes in regulation, maybe more than the Lakers wanted him to play overall. Still, minute 20 left in the game. Good spin, good shot. Yeah, all bets are off when it comes to the fourth quarter in overtime. That's where you try to win. And oh, y'all, uh, the king is back. Yeah, he's back. He looks good when they needed to later. And over time, again, I brought up Stevenson, another big play out of him. Yeah, LeBron's toughness is clearly rubbing off on his teammates. Look at this here. Now, now Lance would, would elbow Boban Marjanovic. Didn't get called. I mean, it's late in the game. No blood, no foul. I like it. Cooper's only down by three under five to go. Rondo tries to throw the ball at Boban. Uh, Williams grabs it. He has a chance. Yeah, but two oh, defenders there, they got lucky. Little bit of a dicey finish for the Lakers. Either way, LeBron returns to 24 points, 14 rebounds, nine assists, one shy of that triple-double. Lakers win 123 to 120. LeBron, how you feeling when you return after missing 17? You know, I'm not feeling, you know, particularly great right now. Uh, I'm, Definitely ecstatic about being back out there with my guys and, and getting a great roll win uh, versus a team that we're, you know, kind of, you know, climbing, you know, during, in the playoff race. But, you know, after being out five weeks, you know, I'm feeling, a, you know, I'm feeling it right now. I wish I could click my shoes together and be home right now in my bed. So, uh, but it was, it's was, it was great to be back out there. I'm like 80% right now, but it felt good to be 80 and, and just to be back on the floor and put on a Lakers uniform again. That's what it's all about. That's when I'm here and uh, happy to be back. He's a GOAT, man. You know, he come out and play hard. He ain't play how long and he played 40 minutes and he wasn't even tired. So, you know, I'm just happy we got the W. He's the greatest player on the planet. So, you know, he brings his superpowers. <laughs> All right, so LeBron James kind of eased his way back into the game Thursday. According to Second Spectrum, LeBron had five drives in the first three quarters and doubled that output in the fourth quarter and overtime with 10. He didn't make a shot on a drive to the basket. 
until the fourth quarter. There was another big game out west, the Sixers at the Oracle. Uh, okay, so the Sixers hadn't beat the Warriors in almost six years. DeMarcus Cousins making his home debut. He said he wanted this matchup with Joel Embiid, and early on he took advantage of it. Yeah, it was a good test for Boogie as a post. He had highlights, but he still has a way to go, especially coming back from that injury. Joel Embiid missed all five of the three-point attempts he took, including that one on the other end. Cousins with a dunk. Yes, I love center on center crime. Centers are still alive in the NBA. They said the big man is still around. Hey, we still here, we out here. And B got his, his get back though, the little windmill dunk there. Cousins is on the bench, but he's like, all right, respect, respect. I like it. Yeah. Take another look. I love it when Joel and B feels disrespected because that brings out the monster. He always feels disrespected. Right. Uh, Steph Curry certainly doesn't. He did a toe touch on that basket. I'm not really exactly sure where he made it, but we say that quite a bit. No Clay Thompson in this one, so Steph was able to just pick and pocket from the perimeter. Yeah, Steph was the only one who connected beyond the arc, but uh, Steph was definitely missing his other splash throw. Yeah, Curry made 10 threes. Warriors up by seven at the half. Sixers down two now in the third. NB, 26 points on this one, just shoots right over Cousins. This guy might be the best post player in the NBA. New age, old age, nice touch. That's a guard's touch right there on that possession. Ben Simmons there with the put back fresh off this first all-star nod. Sixers take the lead up five now but the steal Simmons to Jimmy Butler for the dunk. Yeah the 76ers are looking like the team you expected them to be when they got Jimmy Butler. Oh shockingly Draymond Green is upset. You mad bro? Yeah he's frustrated. They're not guarding you Draymond. Yeah they're trying well be, then be mad at yourself. Be mad at yourself. <laughs> they try to pump each other up to the fourth quarter we go. Curry with the three but this one is blocked. He had 41 points but it wasn't enough last night. Next possession he drives and again is blocked. Again Steph I think he realized he had to do it all. KD didn't really have his best night but this is the best version of the 76ers we found. So Boogie's hometown debut is spoiled and Steve Kerr really critical of his team. We weren't there uh, mentally. We weren't there uh, competitively and uh, we got what we deserved. I thought they totally outplayed us in the second half. We, we didn't respond with competitive desire and intelligence and and uh, execution. So we got, got what we deserved. On top of turnovers, you obviously got to be really kind of more choreographed on certain possessions when things kind of get away from us. And the pace was so fast, never really were able to manufacture great looks for whatever reason. So. I don't think we were as prepared as a team, uh, you know, for, for the different looks that we were going to get tonight. Right, there used to be a few things that were guaranteed. Death, taxes, and the Warriors winning at home. Not so much. They've gone from invincible early on to merely good. I mean, they're allowing over 10 more points per game at home this season than they did in the previous four seasons combined. And now they're 0-3 against the top three teams in the East this season, which is why, Matt, I know you're panicking. Yeah, I am. Uh, the biggest <laughs> NBA news happened off the court yesterday when Dallas traded for the next Chris Tapps Porzingis in a seven-player, two-draft pick blockbuster. Deal came together after Porzingis met with Knicks management Thursday and left them with the impression that he wanted to be dealt. Ask who shall receive. The move frees up $71 million in cap space this summer. Here are the details. Here's who went where. This was big. The full trade looks like this. In addition to Porzingis, Courtney Lee, Trey Burke, and Tim Hardaway Jr., they will have, they'll be going to Dallas. As for the Knicks, they received Dennis Smith Jr., DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, and two future first round picks. Plenty of reaction to go around. Over time, it became clear to us that Kristaps was not completely on board with the, the plan that we had laid out. He is a great player, but this morning in a meeting, he confirmed that he no longer wanted to be a Nick. Given the uncertainty of going into free agency with a player who feels that way, we decided to make this trade. It's just a feeling you get as you're watching how frequently – he comes to practices, how long he's around the gym, different things that he's doing. And we just started to get the, a feel that this might be moving in a different direction. It's always tough to, to lose teammates in, in the middle of the year, but, you know, it's part part of the gig. And, uh, you know, I think if you have a chance to, to add a, a franchise caliber player like uh, like Pozingas, you just got to go for it. You communicated with uh, Pozingas since yeah. the trade? Yeah. What was the, was he happy? Yeah, yeah, he was. What did sure. you say to each other? That's the kids between us. 
at first glance, Janae, it's like, oh, clearly the Mavs won. They got Kristaps Porzingis. But when you look at it's more nuanced. When you look at both sides of this, what stands out to you from their perspective? I think that the Knicks made a huge gamble. As the kids say, they risked it all. <laughs> and what they did here is that they passed up on the opportunity of having Kristaps Porzingis and another Max player and basically got rid of Kristaps. And they're betting on the fact that they can have two Max players this summer. Now, that's huge. And I think this summer is going to be a huge you know, time for free agency. These are two, some of the guys that they're trying to shoot their shot at. But overall, if you look at this trade, I think right now Dallas sort of looks better off because now they have two young rising stars under the age of 23. Um, their best post player is now Chris Stapps Przingis if he's healthy. And they haven't had a good post player since Dirk, since what, 2012, sure. 2013. You also have, your options are now what, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Courtney Lee now being second, third options in New York. Now they're moving to third, fourth supporting cast options. So if you look at the big picture here, I think the Knicks made a huge gamble and Dallas is now betting on their future, especially with Luka in this international style. Well, both teams did that. New York with the future, with the cap space. Can they lure Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving? We'll wait and see, but certainly Dallas got much younger. Chene, thank you. Still